There are many dimensions that exist inside time. Some are known of, while others aren't yet defined. Due to a lack of knowledge we lost in the grid, our ignorance is ignored for the reason is true. It's impossible to grasp the existence of a location out of view. In our minds since removed, we replaced what we knew with facts and figures, linear concrete thoughts, numbers, and pictures. All to understand the true nature of man, we became lost on a once desolate land. Evolution was regression, and regression became oppression, on our minds still fresh to be molded and labeled, creating paradigms to distract us, which we never meant to design. Time here is slow, and our knowledge still grows, back to what's when it was eons ago. For our minds are primitive to the creatures I knew. Communication through thought and feeling is what they do. Words are nothing when vocabulary is unknown, hard to understand through the linear mind of us humans and land. For our minds to grasp the true nature of being and to understand what we really are seeking, to look through a veil to a dimension unknown and discover a place you never had known. These places exist in the paradox of time, inhabiting a different schedule than either yours or mine, where time is changeable or does not exist, and at times it slows down depending on where you live. Some are near while some are far, and there are quite a few just outside your front or backyard. Inside your house or behind the stove, there's even a few on a certain known roads, leading to an entrance of a portal unknown, but once you go in, you ain't coming home. Unless you get lucky, someone throws you a bone, you chase to escape, the fate you create through the tunnel you break. Most are closed off, stuck in a portal, traveling at high speed, morphing at rates, creating a wormhole. Some portals of time you may access to the unconscious of mind, tap into fading memories of a place you once knew, and then just went back through, like a dream you wake up from but then soon forget what you were doing exactly and what really was said. Where travel is thought and color is sound, and tricks get played by strange voices abound. The tunnel is where this journey begins, and when you're on your way through, don't stop to make friends. Stock goblins and sus suspects alike, looking for a way to get out of their vent filled with night. With lost broken dreams and a collar collect, looking for a way to get out of debt. Some other fun on their way the same as you, while hollering a few sayings or two. As they can see you, while you are just two, which divides them the four to another two, that at times can be just like me or you. Without the division, we wouldn't be witness to the strange happenings on these multi-dimensions. Too linear to see the lines that might be drawn and flourished, inside cities, through towns and alleyways, drains underground, cars full of chickens and bags full of socks. Teleported to a time never known, and through an empty dryer, a strange truth I was shown. But it first started out when I was all alone. I stared inside the steel machine crying, my eyes dripping tears, which formed parallel lines that made this all happen. My socks were gone once again, and I couldn't bear to wear the same two once again. Why me, I blubber, throwing my hands in the sky. Why must my socks disappear into time? All at once, these parallel lines, I define, merged together in my mind for a moment in time. Through a tunnel of wind, I was stuck through a square on the inside of a sign reading dry up away. Never before had I heard or seen such a sign, so I didn't take heed as I would in real life. I went on and on, trudging through intervals at an abnormal pace for the human race. The dwellers of Iron Nine, located deep in the dryer of mine, poked out their heads to see what was on, expecting a sock, we froze in shock, locked eyes instead, and into the darkness many fled. The rest that were left knew me, I guess. They once thought that they could never be found in a dimension so deep in the crevice of time. I looked at them and them at me, and then they said, how to you be? I didn't understand the context, you see, so my first response was, where to you be, see, looking for me? They told me, your vision 3D, a primordial being, you be. We know you, but you don't know we, because another dimensional being, we be. And we once were stuck in your time portal, you see. For thousands of years, we lived in a shoe. A thousand in time is short for we. A thousand for you is only one for me. We moved to and fro from shoe after shoe, tired and lost, missing those we once knew. A shoe without socks is like living in rocks. We did that once, and oh boy, the mess of trouble we got. So we were sent to a purgatory shoe to pay our dues. The only thing to help get us through was the socks that we drew. Day after day, hoping to remember our place without getting lost like your fellow human race. The drawing we sent was a message that blew for our people to come through. And we never knew until the shoe, well, the shoe it grew, sending us back in time, the only way to make sense in your mind. And we returned back to the place we couldn't find. So once in a while, your realm opens up on the side that you're stuck. And we were in luck because a portal opened back up, leaving us a passage to get on through. Ever since then, we've stayed in our spot, but the bridge it is mended and socks we don't cut. Now you know the paradigm of the dryer designer. On you must go before you get stuck in the belly button of time, owner neglected by an unkept troll named Gavin who guards the bridge to the next dimensional portals of all who are mortal, letting some through to experience brief moments of traveling these portals. But time is fast and you will not last. You move too slow, so on you must go. Back through your portal and continue to be mortal. We may meet again in a dimension near 10, but only if we cross paths on the traveler's bend.
It was nice to meet you, but on you must go, and I hope you think of us when you have a cold toe. When not a single sock matches, and you must accept, there is nothing I can do to keep my socks in check. We thank you again for the many socks you have lent. I hope you find the odd coins we once left, and the blue rubber band, and a strange foreign document, and tiny pebbles and sand. There is much more, but there is no time to list. We look out for you as you do for us, but we can't creep through or you will become sus. Sus is suspicious because we you can't see, because we exist on a level that is higher than me. We can live in your trees if that's what we please, but we'd rather our bundle of socks we have leased. One day we will move the same as you, only to catch glimpses once in a blue, of the places we knew and the people we drew and the correlations of the things that we knew. A brief encounter for either me or you, but still a place and time for one of a few that me or you knew. The Traveler's Bend is where we can blend, but it's different each time again and again.